Created Equal, Clarence Thomas in his own words by Michael Pack and Mark Patella. Overview. Born into dire poverty in the segregated South and abandoned by his father as a child, Justice Clarence Thomas triumphed over seemingly insurmountable odds to become one of the most influential justices on the Supreme Court. Yet after three decades of honorable service, few know him beyond the contentious confirmation and surrounding media firestorm. Who is Justice Clarence Thomas in his own words? In the follow-up to the widely successful documentary by the same name, Created Equal builds on dozens of hours of groundbreaking one-on-one interviews with Thomas to share a new expanded account of his powerful story for the first time. Producer Michael Pack and Mark uh, Poletta, a lawyer who worked alongside Thomas during his confirmation, dive deep into the justice's story. Drawing on a rich array of historical documents and unreleased conversations with Thomas, his wife, and those who knew him best, Created Equal is a timeless account of faith, race, power, and the personal resilience. Review. Most biographies lay out a person's life from birth to present while covering all the big points and lesser known events of the person's life in order to give you a more complete version of the person. Autobiographies do the same, but from that person's perspective, and you get a more focused and individual singular perspective. This book blends those in and an interview setting while allowing the person to skip around to areas of interest or reading straight through. I read straight through in one sitting overnight. It was great. The style is done in interview style Q&A, but it doesn't read like a stale response and it doesn't operate in a gotcha style we're used to seeing in journalism today. It also doesn't shy away from focusing on big events that might be embarrassing, like the Anita Hill scandal. But it's also nice that it doesn't linger on salacious moments that could have been part of Thomas's life, if there are any. I was really impressed that Thomas's upbringing and it shows a different attitude of America and Americans than we see today. Thomas goes through the life from a poor and segregated early life to going to seminary to being a leftist radical to going to law school and being converted away from leftism by the great Thomas Sowell. It was a a lot of information that I hadn't learned about before as an attack on Thomas by the left since since the early 90s wouldn't only bring him up as a race traitor, which just means he held rightish political beliefs. Of course, the book goes into his life in politics, his confirmation and the debacle that was, and his time on the bench. What we see in politics today in America is interesting to see that it's been the same old rhetoric with the same vying for power with no intention of doing the right thing. There are a few downsides to the section of the book that the interview could have maybe helped along in some asides to his questions. There are some topics that are law or constitution specific that may not be of immediate recall to the reader. Now, those topics are easy enough to be uh, web searched about and you do get the gist of what they're talking about. But the interview also doesn't contrast Thomas's views to those judges on the left or even politicians who are passing these laws. And understandably why one wouldn't want to talk about his eight closest co-workers. In fact, there is little focus on, ben, uh, on Thomas's bench rulings other than his relationship with other judges, including his well-known friendship with Scalia. I guess one could say his written opinions talk about what he actually thinks, but you only get a sense of what he believes concerning what comes before him. For example, he talks about Scalia and him differing on the Fourth Amendment cases. The law nerds would love to read more about this conversation with the interview and Thomas. It's too bad that the section was so short. While Thomas's Catholic upbringing are clear throughout the book, digging deeper into his religious beliefs isn't done enough. When he divorces his first wife and when he remarries a non-Catholic second wife, or what he actually believes about God isn't really brought up. He talks about the structure the Roman Catholic Church gave him and his brother and his grandfather, and there are times when he mentions prayer and God, but this would have been an interesting compare and contrast with today's world versus even 50 years ago, especially in the Catholic Church. Overall, I really enjoyed this book and the style it was written in. Most of the biographies I read could stand to let their living subjects talk out their story of their life with an interviewer guide. Thomas's idea of libertarianism and Ayn Rand and Thomas Sowell were personal highlights, and it's interesting to see how a classical Republican like Thomas parallels with a radical freedom liberty libertarian Republican like Ron Paul. I don't feel like Thomas was untrustworthy during the interview, but not really sure what that would look like. The author interviewer does a good job of structuring the book as both a highlighting thumb through or as a straightforward read. There are areas where he repeats or moves a section of Q&A to lend to other the structure, so a straight read-through might have points of reread, but they're not ex- excessive. This was a really enjoyable read. Final grade, A. Hey.